Welcome back to Metro Exodus. In the last episode, we got through the bridge that was being controlled by the cult led by Solantius, got the Aurora through it, and now we're on the way to some other place. We're kind of on the in-between. So we just left Volga, going to a place that I forgot the name of, but it's spring now. Seasons are changing. Things outside look a little bit snowy, but a lot less than before. So let's explore. Just woke up in this room, talked with Anna for a bit, and haven't looked around the train yet. Looks like the postcards that you find get put up on your wall in the train. That's cool. You know what? I think I miss. I think I missed a lot of the postcards. I think there's at least four of them at Volga, and I only found one. And I don't think there's any going back. I mean, maybe there is. Probably not. Given the story stuff that happened at the bridge. It doesn't seem like going back would really be a thing, because we didn't, like, kill all of the cult. We just held Solanti as a gunpoint and convinced them to let us through, basically. So I don't think they'd be happy to see us if we came back the other direction. Oh, is that all the tapes we found? we we'll probably listen to them again. This game's freaking beautiful. Oh, I made one small change, by the way. Um, in the accessibility options, there's an option to turn on subtitled background. I turned that on. It's going to give a black background behind every bit of subtitle. Hopefully it'll provide better contrast and make YouTube not destroy the subtitles with compression quite as much. <laughs> I love that. Oh, right, the radio. Let's save that for later. It's been a long time since I've looked at this thing. I meant to read more about the crew. I think I only read one person's description. Sam's. And then just stopped. So, I've been wondering what the names of these cr of the small creatures are that bro. So, let's find out. Humanimals are the name of the zombie-like things. Shrimp. Demons, Watchmen, mm-hmm. Lurkers, that's them. Yeah, well, lurkers are far from being the strongest or meanest mutants around, either in the metro or on the surface. They're still a danger to be considered, especially for a lonely wanderer. They're a... They're a... Colonial burrowing species? Col colonial? Colonial? They make a colony? Um, as such, they protect themselves from the larger predators by constructing lots of interconnected burrows in close proximity to each other and hiding in them if sufficiently threatened, while keeping the surroundings under constant observation in search for danger or potential prey. When in a lurker-infested area, you can never guess which burrow a bloodthirsty creature might appear from, though you can bet it will most often be the one you're not looking at. <laughs> yes. Let's look at the description for the Humanimals. That's that's a surprising name. It sounds kind of silly. Humanimals. Like the other mutants created by radioactive fallout, these nightmarish creatures feel right at home in the inhospitable post-war world. Despite clearly being descended from humans, these creatures are not really that smart. Resembling apes in their behavior, they live in packs, don't use any tools, and defend themselves mostly by throwing stones from a distance. One such mutant is not much of a threat, but a fight against a pack of these is hard to survive. Our first encounter with these creatures happened on the banks of Volga. In the open, they seemed harmless and even pathetic, their ugly appearance accentuated by the sluggishness of their movements. Yet, inside the abandoned loading terminal building, they proved to be more than just troublesome to me. It became apparent that, besides throwing stones, they were also capable of ambushing their prey by hiding in shallow water. Ah, so this must have been written after we went to that warehouse, obviously. What else? There's a... I mean, you just read a description of your notepad? I'm kind of curious, what does it say? This isn't just an old military issue map, uh, map case that holds maps, pencils, and notes on the mission parameters anymore. The efforts of Tokarev, Sparta's tech guru, have brought it up to the Order's standard and turned it into a marvel of technology, while remaining surprisingly light. It now includes a map with an automatic course plotter showing my current location, a radio for communication with the HQ, 
a compass and a notepad, which I'm planning to use to record my profound thoughts, interesting observations and other things noteworthy. Perhaps one day I might turn it all into a memoir. Let's look at the look at the binoculars. The binoculars Crest gave to me turned out to be an invaluable gift. Back in Moscow, even on the surface, there was no real need for a pair. But here, they do help me out a lot. Of course, you could take a good look at something from a considerable distance using an optical sight, but a wider field of view, great magnification, and above all, binocular picture, allow to get a good grasp of relative positions of points of interest and distances between them, making the binoculars a must when marking such points on a map. I'm curious about the story behind this behind this lighter. I mean, it's fashioned inside of a bullet casing. This piece of trench art I got from Sukhoi has been with me through a lot, but its value is far from just sentimental. I always rely on it whenever I need to start a campfire, find my way out of a dark tunnel by following the faintest draft, go through a spider, berg, spider bug lair and want to get rid of their cobwebs or simply need a backup light source, and it never fails. Don't really particularly want to read any of these descriptions. New world, we got the fanatics listed here now. Let's look at the crew. Let's do a couple more. I'm not going to do all of them because they take a very long time. But let's start with Anna. Anna. My Anna. From the very beginning, I thought I was not worthy of you. What was I? A nerdy guy from a backwater station? A dreamer hearing voices in his head? An adventure seeker? And you? The most beautiful girl in the metro. The only daughter of the legendary Colonel Miller. The best sniper of the Spartan Order. But how did you put it? There were lots of hard-boiled guys around. God, how much we've been through together. We had our bright days and really dark ones. Our feelings would die out and rekindle again. I even tried to leave, but couldn't go too far. You wanted a normal man, but you still accepted me as I am. You were the only one who didn't consider me mad when I spent days on the surface listening to the radio in fruitless attempts of receiving signals from the other survivors. You knew that every such sortie meant more radiation exposure for me, and less chances for healthy children should we ever have them. And you would still let me go. You didn't prohibit me from dreaming. I always felt your gaze on me. When you would... Cove? Cove my... Cove my back in combat? What? And when I would lose my way, I was always in your field of view. I always knew that nobody could ever replace you. My personal guardian angel of death. If this is not love, what is? Anna, you wanted to believe me, and you couldn't. You tried to not pay attention to your father, and you did. The Colonel firmly believes that our country is occupied and that the war is still going on. And that makes us jumpy. Makes us expect an attack at every turn. Makes us look for traces of enemy presence everywhere. He has us riled up. And Anna is not immune to that. She was so eager to find the occupying forces in that tiny abandoned village near the bridge over Volga that she saw an American banner in a mere old t-shirt. She went to investigate and fell through the roof of an old chemical storage silo. Luckily, the chemicals seemed to have been long since expired and Anna got away with just a few bruises. Needless to say, there was not a trace of foreign troops' presence anywhere close. So this must update as more things happen to us. Because this talks about falling through the roof of that chemical place. Also, am I the only one who thinks something's going wrong with Anna and her health after falling through the roof? She's been coughing a bit. I feel like that's... I feel like that's like the first signs of something worse coming on. Okay, well, let's look at Sam and see if anything new's been added. Because we're they're the only ones that we read before. Uh, yeah, there's some new stuff here. This is the new part. While we were waiting for the Aurora's repairs to be completed, thinking on how to cross the river, Sam, in light of our constant mentions of occupying forces, hypnotized himself into believing that the Colonel didn't trust him. It must be heartbreaking to have served a commander for 20 years with unquestioning loyalty, only to be considered a traitor. 
but it must be equally heartbreaking to have become so close to your old enemy, only to learn that your country might still be there after all. And if the war still is going on, whose side are you on, Sam? Who are you? Right. Right, right, right. They're an American. Yeah. If America still exists and there's a war going on, that could get pretty awkward pretty fast. Let's read Tokarev. So they're the person who has the workbench and keeps helping us out with the T-car. Tokarev, partial to the creations of the famous gun designer he shares the family name with, is a man in love with his craft. He's constantly busy with the crew's weapons repairing. What the... <laughs> Sorry, I, I find this awkward to read because the font is kind of weird. There's a lot of large spaces between them, and the periods and commas are really hard to see and tell apart. Commas and periods look almost the same, so it's it's very weird to read. He's constantly busy with the crew's weapons, repairing, maintaining them, and making improvements. Tokarev knows everything there is to know about weapons, and even more, and can talk about them for hours. But he's not really interested in much else. Still, he doesn't just care for our firepower, but also works on our gear, constantly adjusting and inventing new things, laboring day and night to make sure we all perform to the best of our ability without being hindered by inferior equipment. What would we do without him? On a side note, he seems to be quietly and hopelessly, unrequitedly in love with my Anna. He's always worried about her, thinking of her, talking about her, but I can't even bring myself to feel jealous. Oh, he is? I hadn't noticed that. Oh, that's awkward. Okay, a couple more people. L let's look at the two people that just recently joined us. And I'll read the other soldiers later. Katya and Nastya. I can't really imagine what Katya and Nastya had been through and how they managed to keep their sanity, much less remain as optimistic as they are. A little girl and a tender woman proved to be tougher than fate taking all the blows it could throw at them squarely, and those blows were many and mighty. They had arrived at Volga with a group of migrants, who were out on a quest for a better life. That quest ended with them finding a new faith, and their death along with it. Of course, Salantius didn't kill anyone himself, he didn't even order anyone killed. Still, his holy ritual, where an initiate must dispose of an electric anomaly to be accepted into the fold, how is it different? How's it different from a murder in cold blood? It's no wonder that the colonel let... let, uh... Stefan? Stefan? And Anna coax him into letting Katya and Nastya aboard the Aurora, even though there must be numerous dangers waiting for us. Still, I would argue that those ladies are tougher than some battle-hardened troopers. Besides, Katya's a trained nurse and will most probably need all the medical expertise we can get. And finally, let's look at Crest, an avid storyteller, a talented mechanic, and a natural-born adventurer who traveled all across the vast expanses of this threatening world of the surface, so alien to us, who'd been through hundreds of scuffles and struck thousands of deaths, quite a few of which could well be of the less scrupulous sort. I don't know if Crest will be journeying with us for long, but I'm not surprised he had such an easy time fitting in. Right from the start, he gave us the hand with fixing the Aurora gave us the rail car he'd been using in his adventures and then went with us on a mission to capture the tugboat, giving Duke and me the cover we needed to infiltrate the bridge. It's no wonder that uh, even our usually cautious colonel had no second thoughts about welcoming Crest into the crew. Okay, I don't think there's much reason to read the diary, because that's just what's read out to us when we get to, like, a loading screen for a new zone. So, yeah, there's no reason to read that. Let's check out the radio. Меньшиковым. А сколько он у вас в Иркутске-то прожил? Двух лет нету. 
Переменщикова почку не коти. Забыл про зэков из-под золотого, а? Торговать с ними кто начал? А? Так и за это не ему, а Захару спасибо. Вот это мужик, кремень, один через Байкал. Если он скажет, сразу по рукам ударит. А Менчиков мне тьфу и растереть. Ты немного берешь на себя, а? Звезду поймал, как релейщики отстали. Корона не жмет. Да иди ты, Дэн. Ладно, раз ты вот так за него горой, ну пусть будет Менчиков. Но вообще, знаешь, вы все Захару на шею сели и ноги свесили. Это я еще... Ладно, хватит тебе. Главное это что? Что Иркутск выжил, вот что. Ну и вы тоже. Это точно. Это главное. Ну, тогда конец связи. Менчику привет. Ну, змей. Конец связи. There's something interesting about listening to conversations between people we don't know and probably will never meet, and we don't know what they're really talking about. You know, they, they know all these prior relationships and things that are going on, but to us it's just like, I'm a total outsider. Oh, I should probably turn that off before I get a copyright strike. <laughs> uh, there we go. Yeah, haven't heard anything about occupying forces either. Отец говорит, они маскируются. Говорит, это их шифры, все, они а разговоры за жизнь. Но. God, Miller's so paranoid. Как им удается так замаскироваться, чтобы их и не видно было? Это же железная дорога, они же должны ее контролировать по всей длине, да? Или хотя бы в ключевых точках перерезать. Ну, если они нас захватили. Это же главный транспортный коридор. Yeah, like all those casual conversations were all coded messages. No. Не добрались сюда или отступили уже. Хотя куда? Ни Катя их видом не видывала, ни крест. Хотя мы и без них неплохо справляемся. А? Средневековье какое-то. Вон у Силантия люди в рабстве. Гробит их почем зря. Неужели им бы без этого вранья, без сказок его, без жертвоприношений хуже жилось? А мы что? Сколько лет в подземельях сидеть, есть друг друга поедом и даже не усомниться в том, что наверху жить нельзя. И... Yeah, agreed. I I feel awkward not saying something. What do you got for me, Tokarev? Хотите посмотреть? Так здорово получилось. Сюда, дядя Артём. А, привет, Артём. Видишь, как я тут устроился. Как король число. Верстай, какой шикарный, а? Все под рукой. И места свободного полно. Большая часть того, что вы с ребятами на заданиях нашли, а я у вас отобрал. Oh, and there's the teddy bear that we got. Дальше, конечно, тоже надо будет всем скидываться. Ехать, судя по всему, будем долго. А патроны и другие полезные в хозяйстве вещи на дороге не валяются. И чем дальше от Москвы, тем, пожалуй, будет тяжелее. Так что не забывай собирать все материалы, какие заметишь, а я тут из них буду делать всякое. Работа непочатый край. Вот еще не решил, где костюмами заниматься. А надо будет. Давно пора форму в порядок привести. А то некоторые уже как оборванцы ходят, честно слово. У князя он, 
Вроник спинную пластину вообще не держит. А он ржет. Хорошо, мол, не передний, а то без пальцев на ногах остался бы. Так что я из вас, разгильдяев, сделаю снова настоящую армию. You're doing good work, Takarev. В общем, у меня все. Похвастался, не буду больше отвлекать. Тебя же полковник звал. Да, собственно, и мне тут есть чем заняться. Ломать снаряжение все гораздо, а чинить так руки не с того места. Дядя ТТшник, а? Дядя ТТшник. Что такое, Настя? Дядя ТТшник, а машинка швейная у вас есть? Нету, Настя. А как вы костюмы шить будете? А как все? Нитку в иголку и парусным швом. Ух ты! Научите? Научу. Только попозже. А вы мне тогда ремень на деде Сэма в автомате разрешите починить? Ну, раз так, конечно. Только под наблюдением. Сэм знаешь какой? Ух! Ура! Ура! Дядя Сэм не страшный вовсе, а даже добрый. Ха -ха. Ладно, давай. Смотри сюда. Один раз показываю. Видишь, вот так вот. Вижу. Здесь главное не спешить. Понятно. И аккуратненько. Видишь? Ага, ясно. А теперь вот так. Вижу. They did such a great job making this train and all these people feel alive and lived in. It's amazing. I was gonna say something, but I forgot what it was. Astia's letter. Dear Daddy, I write this so you know where to look for Mommy and me when you come back. Because Mommy and I wanted to stay, but Salentia says we must go to the tower and leave this car, and I don't want to. I wanted to wait for you in the car, but Mommy said I can't, and... Salantius said you won't come back because you failed the test of faith. He's a stupid liar because you never needed any test. As their... Whoop. As their... As their faith is dumb. I remember you said so. Mama said... Mommy said nothing, but I know she's waiting for you too. So please, come back soon and take us away from this, these fools. I love you very much. Oh yeah, I was gonna say, this train has changed a lot. It looks so different. So this is the car, the carriage that we took and attached to our train. And we actually have proper places to sleep, actual like beds and stuff, because the other part of the train doesn't have any beds at all. It's just the, the engine part. Yeah, sure. You okay? No, ничего, продышимся. В общем, правильные вы, Артём, люди. Полковник, князь. Ведь как на мосту ты выступил? Орёл? А сейчас грудь колесом ходит. Хвастается, как есть пацан. Но боевой. Ну так, э, я что сказать хотел. Спасибо, в общем. Вы меня как своего приняли. Ну и я... Э, простой я человек. За мной не заживи. Ну и как оно тебе тут? После подвалов ваших, а? Ну а то места столько. Оно, конечно, бурьяны до да развальны, но... Глядишь, найдем мы что получше, а? Тьфу. 
Хотя, вы же, я как понял, к начальству намылились. Ну, вот и не серчай, братка, ну вот разъясни мне один вопрос. На кое оно вам сдалось, а? Не, ну, глянуть интересно, тут не вопрос. Вот только я пока мотался, начальство встречал в виде жмуров или бугров бандитских. И эти вот куда мерзей урок обычных, вечно речи толкают перед тем, как бандитство какое сотворить. Я это к чему вообще? Мне-то и до войны от начальства этого не холодно, не жарко было. Ну уж теперь, как все накрылось медным тазом, на кое оно вообще? Я-то человек простой, раз подписался, то куда вы, туда и я. Ну вообще лучше бы место поприличнее найти и да пожить чуток по-людски. Хотя, может, у этих хромы там царские. Мы простой. Ладно, Артем. Ты тут продрохнемось. Ну так беги. А я тут подышу еще по мозгу. Ну или стой. Места и полно. You've really done fantastic stuff with this game, allowing you to interact with all the people in your in your crew. It's really cool. Because, like, in the previous Metro games, if you interacted with other people, which wasn't that often, because, I mean, most of the time you were alone. But if you did interact with other people, or, or just even do anything around other people, it was usually just kind of awkwardly waiting around and staring at them as they had a conversation. You just trying to, like, get into their conversation and listen <laughs> to what they were saying. Right? It's not a sort of thing where you're an active participant. But here, they put so much more focus on you actually having a group of people for one, and you can actually interact with them. You don't just hear them talk to each other in their conversations, although you do get that, of course, but you also interact with them directly yourself, and not just by staring at them, but you actually, like, do things, like have a smoke with the other person on their smoke break, or, like, get down on the bed, like, sit down on the bed with Anna on your legs, just kind of talking. Really cool. No, no, not another smoke break. Sorry, didn't mean to get your hopes up. Want to see if I can go out that door, but I can't. Where is the colonel? Hey, Anna, you all right? Ну как? Какие еще гениальные планы начальства? Хотя не надо. Oh yeah, and Crest brings up a really good point. Miller wants to find the government to. I, I'm not quite sure to do what. I guess join them, help them? I guess that's probably, you know, Miller being so old and such a military person. I feel like they probably spent their whole life in the military and they probably come from a military family, I would bet. I'm thinking that the only way they can even imagine making the world better is by taking orders from a government, right? Right, the government would want to rebuild, just do what they say, I'll help them. That's how we'll make a life for ourselves and make the world better. That's probably the only thing they can really even think of to do. It's just kind of what they do. But like Crest was saying, I mean, maybe there is a, an actual real government somewhere out there that we could help out. A government that's actually doing good things, maybe, but probably not. Seems like there's no structure at all to society. Just disparate little groups of people, so, like, why do we even want to find the government? Are they really going to help anything? Oh, hey! Somebody playing that guitar I found? Hey? Oh, that's the person that was hitting on... Катя? Настя это кейд, да? Заходи, Артём, присаживайся. Степан тут вечер музыки устроил. Yeah, play some for me. You don't have stage fright, right? Oh, a jam? Oh, heck yeah. Can I actually, like... Is this like a musical minigame? Like QTE?
Спасибо, Степа. Вы, Катя, простите, но я давно спросить хотел. Отец Настин, он погиб ведь? Настя знает? Погиб. Я не хотела говорить сначала. Мол, на ярмарку уехал. Три дня прошло, я все держалась. Думала, и виды не подаю. Сижу с иголкой, а перед глазами черно, не вижу ничего. А она подошла и говорит, ты поплачь, мам, тебе легче станет. А это ведь Сеня так говорил. Ну, я и заревела. Так что, знает она все. Простите, Катя, простите. Давайте я лучше расскажу, как мы тут на мосту оказались. Мы сами на северо-востоке отсюда жили. По прямой вроде и недалеко. А ехали месяц. Там дальше разбомблено все. Ермак меня спрашивал, я ему рассказала. Все не говорил, там сплошь ящики были. Ну, заводы военные. Да и вообще промышленные города. А теперь даже с фильтрами не пройти. Такая радиация до сих пор. И пути нету. Кратер на кратере. Мы издали видели. И то счетчик, как заведенный, трещал. Ну вот, одна небольшая ветка уцелела. Там бомбить-то особо нечего было. Вот мы по ней и проехали. Думали дальше на запад двинуть, но... Сами понимаете, через мост нас с дизелем не пустили. Мол, сатанинская машина. Но сказали, если отдадим дизель для очищения, примут в общину. В общем, остались мы. А потом... Уже из за не вырвешься. Гад этот плешивый. Батюшка Силантий так голову задурил. Только молились, да поклоны били. Своими руками дизель наш разобрали. И в реку по частям. Мол, в очищающую купель. И еще и на нас с Сеней мужем моим волками смотрели, что мы отказались. Потом Сеня пошел проведать их. А там только местные. Что, где... А Силантик гад устроил им экзамен. Мол, хотите в миру, как все, а не пришлыми быть? Значит, демона одолейте. Все не за ними остановить. Поздно. Одни лохмотья обгорелые. А потом и его туда же отправили. Вот и он не вернулся. Катя, простите, и я не знал. Ну, что тут поделаешь? Дело прошлое. Что мы все о грустном? Давайте вы, Степа, лучше сыграйте что-нибудь. Конечно! Is this when I should leave? Is this getting awkward now? Okay. <clears throat> nice jamming with you. That was also such a cool interaction. 
this beautiful, beautiful music and then a very hard conversation and just really nice. Why is there a very creepy baby right behind her? Hmm. I like that the stuff that we did in Volga actually has a material impact on the people around us and what we can do. Like, I got the teddy bear, so Nastya has it with them. Right, we can see them taking it around and just having it all around them, oh, taking the it everywhere they go. And here, there's um, two guitars, so I'm guessing if I didn't find that guitar, I probably wouldn't be able to play along. 